Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, I wanna go over how do you handle known trusts? When we're connecting via SSH, one of the things that happens is that we verify that the host that we're connecting to, it is a known one and that we it is trusted. And the way that that is done, it is by checking the fingerprint of the key of the SSH server itself. So when every time I connect with Pasha's Sage, that fingerprint gets saved to disk. In addition to that, there are going to be scenarios where I don't want to have a file. I want to just add those by hand in memory for a specific session so I can do a task and just get rid of a container where I'm running, let's say, inside of the Azure uh, command line interface uh, where I don't have that type of permanent storage where I can keep that information. Also, I may not want to have that information uh, safe under my user profile for security purposes. So let's take a look at how I would actually do this. Let's check the connections that we are currently trusting in this host with get SSH trusted host. Here we can see that we have two hosts that we're trusting. Both of them have the same cipher and the fingerprint for each one of them. Now let's take a look at where this information is actually stored in the system. So let's look at the files that are stored inside of our user profile.posh SSH folder, which is the default folder where Posh SSH actually saves this information into a file. Once we look here, we can see that we have a hosts.json file. This is where that information was actually saved. Let's look at the content of the file itself. So let's copy the path. Let's copy the host name right now. And here we have the information of both of those hosts and we can see the structure. Now, I don't want you to actually mo be modifying this file by hand. So I do have some functions that you can use to interact with the file, add and remove hosts. So let's look at the help information for remove SSH trusted hosts. And let's look at all the examples in the help information. So right now, if we look at this, we have a parameter known as host name that takes a string that we can actually use to remove a specific host from that known file. If we look at the examples here, we can see that I'm removing one just by the name of the server itself, or we can even do it by the IP. So let's do remote, remove SSH trust host. Let's do dash host name. And let's remove one of the IPs, 192.168.1.100. Now, if I look at the content of the trusted hosts and I do get SSH trusted host, we can see that that one was removed and we only have 192.168.101. Now there's another way that we can add hosts and we can get the fingerprint. And that is using get SSH host key, where I can specify in this example, the IP address of that host that I remove. As you can see, I went over to the host, connected and got the fingerprint for the host. I do not need credentials to be able to do this. If I look at the help information for get SSH host key, so I can look at the parameters, I can see the computer name actually takes an array, so I can specify multiple hosts. Uh, this should be very useful for you in a lab environment or a production environment where you want to get all of the different fingerprints for multiple hosts. So let's do get SSH host key. Now let's add two more IP addresses here. Uh, 192.168.100, one uh, Let's do 192.168.1.101. And if I run this, you can see that I got all three of those fingerprints. Now, the way I would add this back to the file, it would be with new SSH trust as host command. So let's look at the help information. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is that each one of those parameters have the same name as the fields from the previous function. And when we look at the different parameters, we can see that they take by property name. This is on purpose. So I can pipe from one to the other to add them all. I have two examples here where I'm adding one by hand specifying the fingerprint. In the next one, I'm just piping out the output of get SSH host key. So let's do the piping. 
which I think is the most useful one for most people. Let's remove the last one since that one, I already had it in that known host file. So let's pipe two of these into new SSH trusted host. I get true for both of them. So that means that they were added. I checked the contents and we have those there. So you saw the example of removing, adding, and even querying. Uh, but what about if I wanna keep all of this in memory? Let's say that I'm using the Azure CLI or I'm using any other type of platform or a container where I don't want this stored on a file. So let's remove all of them at once. Get the SSH trusted host, remove trusted host. So now I have none here in the system. And I'm going to be moving right now into using a memory ice store. For doing that, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the help information for SSH memory known host. Just running the command line itself without any parameters is going to create that object for me. So I need to put it in a variable. And I do have examples on how you can actually leverage this in the help information for it. So let's create a variable for this. I'm going to call the variable SSH iStore. And I'm going to do new SSH memory known host. Now I have this object. If I want to look at different properties of the object, I'm going to use get member. Now remember, since this is a variable, I need to use input object and specify the variable. If I look, I have multiple ways that I can actually interact programmatically with this iStore. I can also use the other command lines that we have already covered. So let's say that I have the example where I have a CSV file with all of that information already there for me for three hosts. As you can see, one of the things I did for my CSV, I named them the same so that way I can pipe it just like we did before. So I'm going to do import CSV, new SSH trusted host, known host store, and I'm going to specify SSH I store. And we can see that all three of them get added. If I want to use, let's say, one of the methods, I can do get all keys, and this will give me all of the different entries. As you saw, it is very easy, it's quite flexible. I do provide a series of commandlets and really do like having help information just to make it a lot easier to actually leverage the module itself. I hope that you liked the video and that you found the information useful and that these are features that you're going to be using. I do have to say thanks to Max Kosloff who made the uh, PR for this feature and actually worked on all of the code and made it available to all of us uh, via a pull request for the module itself. So thank you, Max. And again, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.